G'day guys, and welcome back to J-Man Speaks. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a subscriber story that one of my viewers has sent in and wanted me to share with you guys at home. Uh, guys, if you do want me to share your stories, please send them through to G-Man Speaks TV at gmail.com. They can be dating, they can be divorce, they can be bad breakups, crazy things that have happened with women, things you think that guys should know about that they might not think actually happen out there and could benefit the uninitiated or the younger guys out there just getting started on their dating and journey with women. Without further ado, guys, I'll jump in and bear with me. I don't want to sound like I'm in grade two, uh, but I'm reading these out and doing the best I can. All right. So this is the start of the story, gents. Gee, this is a bit drawn out. I'm a high functioning Asperger's and ADD. And as a result, I see the world very differently. And I didn't know why I was so odd for most of my life and why I didn't fit in. Learning this in the last few years has helped me understand my plot in life now. But if I had have known all these years before, hell, life would have been super different for me. Or would it? As not all of this story is due to me, it does take two to tango. This story is what I would like to call a tragedy. At least, that's what I'll call it. And I think it's true of many in today's age. I want to talk about events over more than half of my lifetime and need to share my experience with other guys so they know what they are getting themselves into. It's also cathartic for me, as I've never written this down, nor discussed it at length with anyone except counsellors. I am not perfect, nor will I ever be. I am a neurodiverse older guy with old morals and values, such that you don't get divorced, and when you're with someone, it's for life. Unfortunately, my ex-wife of the time came from a broken marriage, so... To say I was doomed from the start would be an understatement. My mother knew this and I chose to ignore it because I was in love. She never liked my ex-wife. So guys, when your mum or female friends or sisters don't like women you're dating, take heed of that because they can identify women with issues or that are going to create issues for you. They can sense it. They can sniff it out, right? Because they do the same things as well. I guess for any guys who want to commit to someone, look at that person who you're going to commit to and the environment that they were raised in. We do model our parents' behaviour in many ways. And listen to your mum. They know stuff. I was only married for a short period of time. I think we just broke the five-year mark. I can't quite remember, nor now does it really even matter. But I had that person in my life for decades before then. We had lived together for a long time, had already had kids and bought a home, so we were well on our way. But there were so many red flags I had to let go and buried from very early on in the piece. I have worked hard and, I have, and have done so all my life. It's how I'm wired. I have always provided, no one ever went without. She got to stay at home and do the kid things. When they were born, even at one stage, she got to put them in childcare so she should get a break. We even got a cleaner. She worked in her younger days, and then when we married, she didn't have to. Yeah, I mean, Matt, you gave her a really good life, and yeah, uh, <laughs> we're probably going to find out that it didn't um, go your way. You didn't get what you thought you were going to get. Don't get me wrong. In the beginning, things were great. We were young and in love. It was a beautiful, amazing time for both of us, but we were very young. We did have a break for a while early on. The action had started to dwindle, a red flag in itself, and the possess possessiveness and her insecurity was starting to get very overwhelming. Another huge red flag for me. On top of that, I met another girl, but nothing ever eventuated there. I did not have action with this other chick, never went on a date with her, just talked to her and became friends. I didn't think it was right to carry on like this with my girlfriend at the time. These days, no one would bat an island. Times change, but I had old school values. So as I felt wrong, I broke off with my girlfriend. A bit of time passed and we got back together again. Yes, the makeup action was great and things went on. Then again, that first red flag, action, or soon to be lack of it, reared its head. 
As mentioned when we got together, we were very active and things were great. And after a while, it went away. It was not happening. I remember trying to talk to her about it. One night, I could still see us having that conversation. It was completely one-sided. I got nothing back. Stonewalling, I think they call it. Another red flag, which would be repeated for years and years and years. I remember sliding down the wall, weeping due to the sheer frustration and lack of intimacy. You'd think she would have jumped out of bed and come and comforted me, but nothing. Whenever I cried or was upset, she was completely absent. I don't think she could handle it. Either way, the action never improved. I did put up and shut up though, as everything else was okay, and I thought it would not be an issue. I'm a guy. I can have a wank, so all good. (laughs) My first big simping mistake and a massive red flag. But that's true, and a lot of guys, um, this happens very slowly, and you start to become um, accustomed to these sort of things and, and changing in relationships. And other guys, if you say anything about it, like, oh, that's just what happens, you know? And it is just what happens to many, many men when they get married or into long relationships um, or moving in with women, right? It's, it's what happens to most guys, but no one really shares that information with anybody else because as a man, it's embarrassing to admit you're not banging your missus, right? Then she had her something. I remember finding it on her phone at the time where she was professing her love for some other guy that she worked with. I love you. Who was actually married to another girl nonetheless? So I confronted her about it. She denied it. I told her I saw her phone. The tears were turned on. And about at that time, I should have severed things and ended it there. But nope, not good old simp. Shoved it under the carpet. Another red flag gone and buried. At this point, I'm delaying the inevitable. I didn't want to deal with the hurt either. And that's very true. And that's a lot of things that guys do as well. We, we put things under the carpet. We put our heads in the sand. We ignore red flags. We ignore, ignore our intuition because there's a huge exit cost and penalty for us. It hurts financially. It hurts emotionally as well. We're not rocks, right? I think men emotionally hurt for longer and harder than women. They do say that women have have it intensely up front and then quickly move on. I think that's true. But men hold on to that shit for their whole lives. Then, there was a nagging about marriage. When are we going to get married? Continually. Playing to her insecurity. Of which there were many. She came from a broken marriage. While terrified of exacting the same thing, she was actually pushing herself towards the same outcome. And it couldn't just be any ring. It had to be a lump of coal, a status symbol if you prefer. In hindsight, my marriage was a sham or a front. Everything looked fine and dandy, but on the inside, it was a disaster in the making. Been there and done that, buddy. I'm uh, resonating with you here. So like I mentioned, the house and then the kids came along. So the action started up for a brief bit. As kids are on the agenda, I had to do my duty. Ironically, to this day, you know, I know exactly when all my kids were made. Oh, and when pregnancy was confirmed, the action stopped. That's it, boys. That's when you're going to get the most ever. They're going to be all about it, especially when ovulating. You're going to think this is great. It's going to be a new revived uh, part of action in your life. No, it's just going to get the job done, put the seed in, fertilize it, fertilize the crop, so to speak. And so once the pregnancy was confirmed, the action stopped. And it didn't just stop for a bit. It stopped during the duration of the pregnancy and went until well after my children were born. Thus started the dry spell, and I went for years without action. I figured she might have been scared of getting pregnant again. By the way, she couldn't due to meds. So I went and got the chop as I didn't want any more kids. So guys, chops a vasectomy. Waste of time that was, i.e. you needed to have been having action for that to have been worthwhile. Further, she hated the smell of cum. She used to gag whenever she smelled it. <laughs> I obviously never got head. Interesting, interestingly, I don't like it now. More psychological damage done that I need to work through. So what do you do when there is no action? Like any normal human being, I have my needs too. Who would have thunk it? I used to watch prawn and sort myself out. That in itself is not a good workaround. As a guy, when you watch this stuff, it does become a problem. 
I have ED issues these days, likely due to that, and the trauma from the crap and emotional manipulation I've put up with over the years. One day, she caught me wanking, actually. When she did, I unloaded too, lol. She lost her shit entirely. She ran out of the house and left, but come back later. It was never discussed again. I had needs that she didn't fulfill. Another red flag, buried. According to you, according to her, you didn't touch yourself. It's a wonder my kids were ever born. Jesus. Well, buddy, you gotta, you got to go hide. you got to go sit in the VN in the garage, turn the heater on on a 40-degree day and knock one out. <laughs> but seriously, I can understand your frustrations. So as the years went by, my frustration grew, as did my resentment towards her. Coupled with working really hard, I was pretty sad in life, suffering from anxiety and depression, which has hamstrung me living my life to the fullest. And seeing my friends in successful relationships had started and saying and also seeing my friends in successful relationships and had also started drinking pretty heavily as well. I was not an abusive drunk. She would tell you otherwise for her convenient truth, you know, never their fault at all. Just a very sad and lonely drunk. Not a good look, for sure. And not really helping my cause at all, nor would I have been good to be around with. But it's not like I was getting laid and everything was paid for. Thinking about it, more my credibility would have been out the window. I did have times when I had gone years without drinking, as I am now. I don't drink anymore. Regulation issues due to ADD. Well done, mate, getting off that, getting that monkey off your back. A lot of guys go down that route and never come out. Things started to go on a severe downward spiral. So bad that I started to sleep in another part of the house. In hindsight, this was the beginning of the end. Guys, if you get to this point, it's done. Call it. Should always be up late. Another red flag. She was likely texting someone. But one thing I did notice was that the phone of hers was glued to her. It never left her side. In the shower, phone was on the counter. Everywhere, except once. I had my suspicions, dead bedroom, zero inter- intimacy, zero emotional support, no trust anymore. I, don't exactly, I didn't exactly catch her, as she, as she still was, is a constant liar, even to her own children. But based on the amount of lies going on, and a look through her phone, talking to the hubby of one of her friends, I was naive at the time, but she would have been banging behind the cricket pitch for sure. I asked her about it, all completely denied, didn't have enough to go off. I want to find him and shake his hand if in fact he was doing it. At least she was putting out for someone, but would go a long way for me for closure. Yeah, sorry to hear that, mate. And I went through a very, very similar situation. I didn't catch it, but um, I think a lot of guys will resonate with this. Women um, being shady on their phones, having it glued to them, gaslighting you when you're questioning what they're doing on it. Um, The things that you said there... um, Very, very similar situation I had, especially sleeping in different parts of the house. Fully agree with you on that one. At that time, towards the end of my marriage, I had an amazing job that I really loved, but she did not like it at all. I got to work from home. This was all pre-COVID. So used to be able to see my kids a lot more. It was amazing for me as a father to be able to do that. So my dad could have only wished for. Previously, my work was really early starts and really late nights. And on call, but my new job didn't pay as much. Turns out it would have in the end if I'd sat it out another month. So she made me, yep, simp that I was, leave it. You have to wonder to this day. It really was inconvenient for her to me for me to be at home working. Tell me if she was not up to something or am I making shit up? As I say, mate, I, I, I think she's probably up to something. You were, um, you are cramming her style because I know a lot of guys say that women in the workplace cheat. Yeah, sure, that happens. But women at home with all the time in the world on their hands, uh, where you're at work and absent, um, they can run amok. Absolutely uh, live a second life, fully get away with it. Guys, don't believe me that it happens, but it happens a lot. The last Christmas before my divorce, I caught up with some mates. We had a good time at a barbecue. My mates could tell I wasn't right and did their best to cheer me up. I met a lovely girl there too. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Wrong. I got to have a good chat with. He was was a normal that I wanted. And I thought to myself, well, that's what life should have been for me, which plunged me into a pretty bad headspace that I could not get out of. I had my last day of my job I loved and nothing left. I had given all my work, all to my work, as it was the only satisfaction in life I was getting. 
So with nothing left, I attempted to unalive myself. I couldn't stand it anymore, the loneliness, any of it, and seeing that small glimpse of what I should have had in life, I had failed at. I had failed. I had become a burned out shell of a man with nothing left. In a marriage with someone I loved, who I, know, who I now resented, alone. I had tried desperately to fix things, but you cannot fix a failing relationship on your own. At least not with someone who professed they wanted to, but didn't want to do the work. Very common, mate. I'm sorry you felt that way and glad that you weren't successful in your attempts, buddy. So um, glad you're hopefully out of that space now. You don't want to have permanent solutions for temporary problems, as bad as they seem at the time, guys. Um, so if you are feeling that way, you can always send me an email or something like that and, and, and um, you know, I'll respond to you as quickly as possible to have a chat with you. Um, you know, I, I really would like to support guys who are going through a bad time. I spent some time in the psych ward talking stuff out. I had to go back to work as I had to provide and pay bills. We live paycheck to paycheck. Credit card debts were right up there. Living outside our means, never cooking and eating takeout seven days a week. This was all my fault. I wanted to go home though, but she wouldn't let me go home, which was labelled as being for the sake of the kids. Thankfully, I managed to stay with my parents so I could get things back on track, all the while working my ass off, paying for everything in a house I wasn't allowed to return to. Shit. I remember talking to her on the phone one night, crying my eyes out, begging to go home, and continually saying to me, only when you get better. Do you know to this very day, her parents are still insistent that I apologize to them for attempting to unalive myself. That is shocking, mate. Uh, I'm sorry you have to go through all this. But as we all know, as men crying and being emotional with women, uh, they switch off as much as they say they want you to be open with them, be vulnerable. Um, I've done it in my past before, guys. And you can see the, the eyes glaze over. Like they, they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. They're not interested. They say they want that from a man. They don't. It, it actually genetically or something puts them off. Um, seen it. Seen it happen right in front of me. I've done it. So, merrily working my ass off, living in the hope I could fix this and go home, talking to her off and on, on the phone, living with only the basics, but something wasn't right. Had she been damaged through my attempt? How was she getting help? Was she getting help? No, that's right. She had tried to get help due to issues in the past, where she went on medication, but didn't like it and stopped and never continued. Something had shifted here. She didn't come to see me. I barely saw her. And this was the only in the following weeks. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And my kids, where were they? <laughs> Things did not progress. My wife and, ba- and kids basically lived in the house I was paying for, and I lived with my parents. It was awful and worse than ever before. My son was starting to come and see me, but the rest of the family were going on without me. Then came the marriage counselling. I had not good reports from people on marriage counselling, but thought, you know, what what have I been in this relationship for most of my life? I have tried to make this work. I have tried to fix this on my own. Maybe with someone else, we can get this fixed finally. There was hope. First session when I came was good. A lot of it was focused on what was wrong in our marriage, but moreover, what happened to me and how I was going. I remember saying how much I wanted to go home, which was again, shut down. So then comes the next session. She never showed up. She was, she was busy and couldn't make it. These are not the actions of someone who loves their husband. So I went on my own, had a chat with a counsellor who was interested in how I was. I asked him what was the point of this when she wasn't even here and he brushed it aside and said she would come next session. Next session came and she showed. It was good to see her, but something still wasn't right. We chatted with the counsellor where the focus was on me, what I had done and how I had behaved and how we would fix that. Nothing about the years and years of tragedy our life had become together and how we would fix that together. A subsequent session was much the same, with the session being nothing more than a blame game of what we can blame on the husband for today. I remember after that session, my soon-to-be ex-wife asked me for a hug. I knew that hug would be our last, and my gut told me, not long after I filed for divorce, which my ex would not sign. She had to be served. In later days... In her later days, she started working again. She was hanging out with someone from her work. So rather than looking after her husband and focusing on cancelling and fixing things, even took one of my kids to a concert and didn't know if she went or not. 
The convenient truth she upheld was the girl I met at my mate's barbecue I was having an affair with. Ironically, we did get together about six months later, which only lasted a short time as she was pretty special in her own right. The truth was utilised so she could remain the victim and me the perpetrator, just like we see every time in another failed marriage. Call me a complete effing simp, completely damaged goods or just a retard, but I will love her and the memory of the person she was until the day I die. You think you know someone until you actually figure out that you maybe never really did. I'll often burst into tears from time to time as the memories still overwhelm me. I think, I think as my brain is wired differently, I can't get over these sort of things. There's a lot more to this story. I left a lot out. If I put it all in, G-Man could do a effing mini-series on it. It's been good for me to get this off my chest. Now I've started, I'll add to this as well. I think it's maybe part of the healing I needed to have. I don't know. I know that I cannot even fathom the disaster of dating for the younger generation, but if sharing my insights with folks helps maybe a couple or even an individual, then my existence has been worthwhile. And that's the end of the story. Mate, thank you very much for uh, providing uh, that detailed account. It must have been very hard to write up. It takes a lot of balls, guys, to write your stories in and for me to read them out to thousands of people. Uh, but I think it's very important that we as men, we share, uh, you could call this a horror story, but this, this story uh, provided by this subscriber really lists out all the things that men have been saying. Uh, women completely turning off on you, kicking you out of your own house. Uh, she's essentially... Um, institutionalized him, um, uh, <laughs> wants nothing to do with him, lives her life as normal while you're in there trying to recover, mate. Um, I've heard of this happening. I, I told a story about a really good friend of mine, Larry, um, that you would have heard in one of my other stories that I put out. Uh, if you haven't, check out my other, I think it's called um, Cheating, Cheating Stories, Cheating Wife Stories. It's part of this series where I told four short stories. Larry was institutional. He was taken to a cycle. He had to stay there for a short term, but he begged and screamed to get out and his friends took him home because they were worried, just like you, that he was going to do something drastic, you know, have a temporary solution, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. But he has come good over the years. But you know what happened when he went to that psych ward? The wife at the time, she didn't come and visit him. She like forgot about him, went on, went on about her life. She couldn't give us stuff. That's how cold women can be when they're done with a man, when they've lost all inter intimacy, attraction, and care. They're just cold, ruthless. And it doesn't happen for everyone, guys, but this stuff happens out there. But look, thank you very much. And guys, once again, if you want to share your stories, please send them to me, and I'd love to share them with the guys. Please include as much detail as possible, because the more detail, the more we can inform and share notes between us and in this community. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next one.